Has this ever happened to you? Yes, thank you. Thank you for getting my package. Oh, I know they mean well, but man, I really needed this for a review. I wish they didn't have it for three days. Then this might be what you're looking for. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Eufy Smart Drop Smart Delivery Box. This delivery box was provided to me by Eufy for the purposes of doing a review. However, just like any time something is provided to me, that does not sway my review in any way, shape, or form. And in fact, there are some things that I think could be done better with this smart box, but we'll get into that during the course of this review. One of the first things that you need to consider with a smart drop box like this is obviously, well, the dimensions. Is it going to fit where you're going to want it to go? In the case of the Eufy Smart Drop here, it is 27.5 inches high, 21.6 inches long, and has a width of 21.6 inches. However, it is the interior space that you want to know about because you want to make sure that it fits those packages that you're getting. Well, interior dimensions for this are 25 inches high, 18.3 inches long, with a width of 17.7 inches wide. I have found that most of the boxes that I've tried putting in here for testing purposes or have received during my testing period, I did not have any issue. However, if you are getting multiple boxes that are very large, you may need to empty the box out more than once in order for them to all fit. The material itself that the entire box is constructed of is cold rolled carbon steel with a metal coating. That metal coating gives it an IP65 weather resistance rating. It is also hydrophobic and anti-corrosion, meaning, well, you can leave this out in the rain and get snowed on, which I have in several occasions during the testing period, how it would hold up. And I have no rust on it anywhere, which is great. The box itself did not come fully assembled. You do get it in a delivery box. So let's actually take a look at how we get this delivered as well as assembly. For starters, we will pull this into frame a little better and then flip it over. In the box itself, we have an assembly guide. This will be interesting. I'm not a fan of assembling furniture. Normally I leave that to my wife to do. She enjoys it. I don't, I get frustrated, we'll see how this goes. It seems simple enough. And then on the back of the assembly card is mounting instructions if you want to install the security box into concrete. Delivery box instructions, so little sticker you can put on it, press the button, giving you information, a little hard to see. Quick start guide for our security box, the front panel of our box. That does feel like some very strong gauged metal there, labeled with an A. We have our camera and PIR sensor located right here. Our number pad for codes, should we elect to use that, and an open button. And under this waterproof flap is a keyhole in case you want to use a key to open the box instead of an app. So we're going to flip this over just so we can see the back of it because located right here, we have our sync button. And I'm gonna say probably Battery door right there, since that's close to the camera. We'll know more later. All right here, which is probably gonna be one of our side plates. There you go. We have part C, which is probably gonna be another side. Again, same material as before. For section D, this is probably gonna be our back panel. There are vents on this to help keep the box cooler in the summertime so that you don't have to worry about things overheating. We've got part E here. I'm going to take a wild guess and say this is probably going to be the bottom of our security box. And then all the way at the bottom, last but not least, we have the lid for our security box, which is labeled part F right there. If you're like me and made it to the bottom of the box and wondered where the actual screws and so forth are, it's actually located in one of the pieces of styrofoam <laughs> that I moved early on and just kind of tossed aside. So make sure when you're opening things up, you go through and actually grab this because you're going to have inside of our assembly box. We've got our two pistons for the lid to help open things up. As I suspected, here is our battery for the unit, keys, and then we get an assortment of screws and L brackets. There's a USB cable in here. And those are your big boys for mounting to concrete, we won't be doing that. So these 
We'll go back in the box. So there's actually all of our styrofoam pack material shoved back in here before we actually start assembly. Because also, I want to make mention, all the corners also have very substantial padding to protect your box in transit, which is great. Okay, so we're gonna start assembly. Maybe if I feel particularly artistic, I'll throw in a time lapse instead of making you sit through the entire process. All right, the last bit of assembly is actually taking the battery pack here, which is removable and rechargeable because you can see right there, there's a micro USB port. Take this, insert it into the panel here, and then close it up and screw it shut with a single screw, making it much harder to remove this should somebody actually open this and want to tamper with anything. After which we move over to setup of the smart features. So we'll install this. Welcome to UFI Smart Drop. You're actually gonna want a glasses kit for that because it's super small. So we're gonna skip that. With assembly done and the battery in place, we now move on to setup and realizing why I have a technology channel and not a home improvement channel. For starters, we come down into our Eufy app and then we select add new device and then scroll down till we find the smart box. We select the smart drop and it wants us to pick our Wi-Fi connection. So I'm going to slap this over to my IoT network and put in my logon credentials. After which we have to push the sync button inside the box here. So we're gonna do that. Wait for two seconds. I did hear the beep. So we're gonna select next. It's gonna generate a QR code on my phone, which we then put in front of the smart box. Connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. And you may or may not have heard that, but it said connecting to the Wi-Fi network, please wait. So you heard two beeps, I heard beep beep. I select next, and now it is connecting Setup was successful. to the Wi-Fi network. And the long name for this particular thing has sensed somebody walking. Open button to make a delivery. And it's prompting me to press open button right here to make a delivery. Enter the pin code on the address label and press open. And it's giving me press open button to make a delivery. And it's giving me instructions because well I haven't really set up anything else in the app. So let's hit next. We're going to give it a name so that it actually comes up with something other than the long name for this. And I'm going to call this smart drop and select next. And we have to come up with a master pin code, but using just those numbers. And select next. We must verify our pin code and select next. So now we have our pin code in place. So we've got open methods, open swift, open pin, and press to open, no pin required. These will be covered in the apps portion, but right now it's recommending that the smart drop will switch to press OK when it is empty, which means when I come in press and close it, to make a delivery. it will only require the open button. But I'm gonna switch it down to no pin required right now because, well, I haven't set up any deliveries that require a pin, and I am expecting some packages and I wanna see if people will actually use this. So I'm going to select next. Open button to make a delivery. So this one is saying, are you sure you wanna do this? Because Smart Drop cannot identify deliveries in this mode. We're gonna hit confirm right now because like I said, I don't want to have somebody trying to type in a pin when there's no pin. Open button to make a delivery. And that's gonna keep going off. As you can see right now, you can do cloud storage. You can activate it for free. This is going to be a trial, which will allow you to have 30 days free. If you don't do this method, you won't be able to have recordings. Based on some of the other videos that I've watched, in the future, they will be allowing you to pair this to a home base too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna activate our free trial just to give you the best information that's possible right now. Added successfully, I have installed the smart drop, skip, or I can install guide, selecting install guide is pretty much what we read on the side of the box. So we don't really need that, but we'll swipe, 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 swipe. Here we go, and done. And this right here is our smart drop 
staring at me. For those wondering, solo setup of the box took me 33 minutes using no power tools. Everything you saw there was using a hand tool and assembling without the assistance of anybody. So if you want use power tools and two, have an assistant, you could put the box together much faster. Quickly moving around the Eufy box, just to give you an idea of what all the sides look like. You can see the construction as well as the rivets where I was screwing things in. We're gonna come around to the back side here because right there you can see that it has ventilation, which is good. And then right here, this actually is a plug that you can pop out in order to have a wire. So you can have this powered, but that cable is not provided. And then here we have our other side and we're gonna pop up to the top here, give you an idea of what that looks like as well as the delivery sticker that's not painted on. Don't know why they did that, but it is a sticker that you will have to adhere when you're done with assembly. The bottom of the smart box here has plastic feet that help raise the box off the ground so you don't have to worry about it rusting out the bottom. Likewise, interior, there are drainage holes which you can use to help if any water gets in here so that it doesn't sit in the bottom of the box. It also has the ability to be anchored to either your concrete or wood deck for my purposes, I did what another reviewer did, and you just put a 45 pound weight in here, and it'll make it much more difficult for somebody to take this. In fact, if they do decide to try and take your smart delivery box here, well, they're gonna get a nasty surprise because there actually is an accelerometer built into the smart box, which will sound an alarm if somebody jostles it too much while the lid is shut. The alarm will not go off if the lid is open, thankfully, because that would have been a pain for me when I was moving this around for testing. Here we have the interior of the box. We can see the ventilated holes in the back here, as well as our two pistons on either side to raise the lid up. The lid itself will not close by itself, so your delivery person or you will have to shut it again. There is a channel up here, up front, which no matter how you try, will collect water if there is water on the lid when you open it up. I kind of wish that there was a reservoir system to kind of channel the water away and then it pools up here. It doesn't get into the box from up here. You may get a little bit of splatter in there when you open, but you could see there are drainage holes in the bottom, which is very helpful. Now, something of this size, well, you might be wondering how well does it fit packages in here and I am happy to report that I have a selection of some packages that I can place in here. To give you an idea, these are some of the larger packages that I actually could find from tech company that I will be reviewing, as well as a pet supply store. store. And then here, generally, is what I would get my pet food in. And there you can see, Everything fits in there without a problem. Now we're gonna move on to the front of the delivery box because well, that's where all the smarts of the delivery system are. But I also wanna point out, you probably saw during the walk around, some leftovers like this. These are part of the assembly stickers that were left on the box, either whether because of the residue or whatever. I was doing this in a very cold garage, so maybe if you're doing this in the summer or spring, they won't adhere quite so badly to the box itself, but I have had other products that have stickers that peel off a little easier, just a little food for thought. Not sure about that, kinda wish that was easier to take off. One other is this here, the delivery. I kinda wish that this was done in a reflective paint only because I have had several delivery people either not pay attention to it or just ignore it completely. Not to say that they don't see it because it's on my porch and there's a light, but I do wish that was kind of reflective. Just saying, putting it out there into the world to see what happens. The smart box itself has several different modes in which you can open the box. You have, you have a pin code here, you have your master pin code which will allow you to get into the box, as well as you have separate pin codes that you set up for delivery people. You have the ability to open your delivery box via a key right there. You have a set of inverted struck keys and simply put the key in and twist and your box will open up. 
Make sure you don't lose these in there before you actually set up the box. You also have the pin code, which will open it up. You'll notice that the keypad does light up, so it does make it easier to see at night should you have this in a low light situation. And then you also have the ability to open your box via the app. Just like that. And anytime the box is open, it does give you a notification that the box was open. And if you're using a pin code, it will let you know which pin code was used, whether it's the master, FedEx, however you have this set up, which I really like. The one thing that I wish Eufy had was a sticker that you can put on the inside of the box on the lid that says, shut the box. It does take a bit of time for that to actually tell the person who may or may not have left the box open to shut it. We're talking a good almost 50 seconds before you get a notification saying, shut the box. Please close the lid when you leave. Thank you. So I wish that they had a sticker or that they made that announcement a little faster. Coming over to our camera section, our camera will notify you if anybody approaches. It will also have an announcement for any delivery people that may approach the box. Press open button to make a delivery. Keep in mind that is an option that can be turned on or off in the application. The camera itself and camera system use a PIR, so that's a heat-based motion, so need heat and motion in order for it to trigger. The camera itself is 1080p with a 160 degree viewing angle with smart detection zones and IR lights. There are four IR lights, two on this side, two on this side, which help this see in the dark. One of the things that I think could have been done a little better with this is because the camera is placed over to one side, depending on how your home setup is, you may be missing some video from this because of it's over to one side. The other thing is it's actually angled up. So it's not aiming straight out, it's angled up. It is meant to record people as they're putting something into your box. However, the problem that I've had with this because I've been testing this during the colder months is this can ice over and make it difficult to see. This collects snow as well, which can make it difficult to see out of. As you could see from the inserted footage, So using this as a primary surveillance camera is not a good idea. It's nice that you can use it as a backup or in addition to, but don't rely on this camera as your only means of detecting if somebody is coming and looking around your house. So a lot of the aspects of this that we were talking about are all done through the Eufy Security app. So let's take a look at what you can actually set up and do using the Eufy Security app. This is the app for the Eufy Smart Drop. Keep in mind, this is only going to be a part of what the Eufy app can do as this is for the Smart Drop itself. Eufy app obviously does lots of different things. This is also after a recent redesign of the Eufy app. There are some things about that that I don't particularly care for, but that is a video for another day. Let's take a look at right here, this device up here. This is my smart drop. You can see that now there is a battery indicator right here in the upper right hand corner, but also one in the lower left hand corner. My one complaint with that is that the battery icons do not match in that. Yes, I know that the battery for the Eufy smart drop has dropped considerably because I have been testing it for quite some time. And that big icon there kind of makes me think that, hey, it's still full, but that one down there is the correct one. You see the name of your device right there, smart drop, as well as the Wi-Fi status, which in this case it is connected and that the box itself is closed. Over here on the right hand side, there is a box with a number. In this case, it is zero. That is to indicate any clips that the Eufy Smart Drop has taken. Your three dots here indicates the settings for this. We'll get into that in a moment. And then right down here, we have our delivery with an image of the box. And then again, a zero indicating that there are no deliveries. Now in the previous app, before the upgrade, I did get a delivery in time to see that this icon will actually change, letting you know that there is a delivery in that box and you have an icon there that changes to a one. If you select that, what this does is bring us into the smart box itself. Here you see an image, that image will also show you a package if there has been anything in it. It is indicating the status of the box, so in this case it is currently closed. 
We can select our live view right from here, which I'll show you a little later, and then our delivery pin. So if we come in here, we have our individual delivery pins. These pins are randomly generated by the app itself. So if I come down and I add and I say, and then next, I can select whether I want high security where it'll be a six digit pin, medium security or most convenient. Generally, I go with the five digit and then select generate. And here you go, it generates a pin. Now this is the pin that you will add to the label of your address so that people will actually use it. If you put it in the special directions area, sometimes it'll get used, sometimes it won't. It depends on where you're getting it from. Normally I get a lot of things from Amazon, so I test it a lot with that, but I did try it with Walmart previously. Another thing with the pin, which is kind of nice, is if you have neighbors that are nice enough to take your package previously and hold on to it, well, you can give them their own pin to the box, so instead of waiting for a couple of days to see them to get your next review item, you simply give them the pin, they put it in, and you can check your box later. So that's nice, and obviously you can always come in here and change the pin, change the name, or copy the pin so that you can give it to somebody, or we can come right in here and delete it. And that is our pin section, so we're gonna go back. Down here you see our events. Right here you can see these are events from the other day when I was grabbing some video footage. It lets you know right there in the upper right hand corner that it is going to the cloud because I was testing the cloud service for this. You can also use the home base, which we'll show you a little later. Here you can see closed, open via master pin, and then me doing things overnight to get footage and press button to open. It gives you running information about all of the actions that have happened with the smart drop. If we come up here, we have our settings, our settings, which are also accessible from our main page here, selecting our three dots, and then the settings icon there. Here are our settings. Here we see the actual battery status. You can see it's actually even a little lower than that little icon shows you, uh, which again, I wish they kind of would make that a little more uniform and easier to understand. Here we have the name of my device. I just called it Smart Drop. You can change that to whatever you'd like. You can have your logo and watermarking for the video, which we'll show a little later. You have your open method. So right now I have it set with open via pin, which are those codes that you saw earlier. By default, it will start with the press to open no pin required. So what I call that is easy mode. You pretty much just push the open button on the front and the lid will pop open. Keep in mind, it does need to be manually closed by the person. You also have auto switch, which is recommended. Smart drop will switch to press to open when it is empty. So this is the one that I originally tried, which is somewhat secure, but not great if you have multiple packages coming. So what this will do is the delivery person pushes to open, puts the box in and closes it. The next person to come along pushes the open button. It will not open unless the master pin is put in to retrieve the item. So again, if you have multiple packages, this one's not gonna be the best. Here we have our master pin, which will allow us to change and edit the master pin. I'm not going to show you that. We have our power management selecting here. We have delivery mode, which is the way that the battery lasts the longest. This will only trigger when somebody is actively typing in a pin or pressing the open button. Here we have delivery and guard mode, which is the mode I was using, which is going to use up the most battery. It's going to use the camera as almost like a sentry. So if somebody gets close to it, it will start recording as well. It's not super close and the angle of the camera makes me a little mm, about using it like this, but for testing purposes, I was using it in delivery and guard mode. Here we have our motion recording mode. We have F, if you're familiar with any Eufy products, you can have optimal battery life, optimal surveillance, or customize. And depending on what you need the recordings to do for you, you can come in here and change it to optimally fit your best needs. Here we have motion detection. You have your motion detection on or off, motion zone, which if we come in and turn that off, is very useful because, well, my next door neighbors here kept setting this off and having it prompt them to put a box in my smart drop. So I changed the detection zone so that it would no longer prompt them to put something in the box. You can add another zone if we wanted to, which is always good with Eufy. They allow you to have two zones with most of their products. So you can set up two specific areas to monitor if you wanted to. You have your detection sensitivity settings. I've left this on three and all of the notifications that you're going to see later are all based on that. You have detection type. I selected for human only, but you can have all motion if you wanted to. 
and then motion test mode, which will allow us to come in and actively test the motion. But you should be in front of the box when that happens. Coming back, we have video quality. I have it on auto, but you can have high, medium, and low depending on your bandwidth and storage needs. Audio settings right here. You have motion activated prompt, enable smart drops, motion activated voice prompt. So what that means is if I turn that on, somebody walks up to the box, it will say, use pin code or press open. You have microphone, audio recording, which enables audio when you're recording, and then speaker. So you have low, medium, and high. I've used it on medium and it's worked just fine. I was actually very surprised with the audio quality that you get from the smart drop here. And then we're gonna come down to storage. When I first set this up, they only had availability of cloud storage. However, now we have local storage where you can select a home base too. We have our connection for our Wi-Fi, time settings, tutorials, installation guide, share device if you want about this particular device and share your thoughts about the device and the app itself. So those were all of our settings for the smart drop. Now let's actually take a look at what you're really here for, which is if I press the play button there, this is the live feed for my smart drop outside. Up here in the upper right hand corner, I can select this and it will make the image bigger. I have a large indicator icon right there, letting me know whether the smart box is open or closed. I can select open right from the app if I wanted to. Here I can select record and it will record whatever it's seeing at this time. I can turn that off and it saves it to your album. Next we have our save photo, which looks like a pair of scissors. It's a little odd for that icon. Here we have our talk. So right now, anybody who happens to be in front of my smart drop is hearing whatever I'm saying. We can turn that off. Here we have our volume control. So if we wanted to mute any audio while we're visually looking through this, we can do that, help save on bandwidth. Here we actually have our bandwidth icon letting you know how many kilobytes or bytes of information are being transferred. Over here, this is actually our more settings, selecting that brings up our extra menu. So here we get brought to our events area, which will show us any event that has happened. We have our night mode. So selecting this will automatically turn off night vision. And then I can tap it again to turn night vision back on. As you saw, it didn't automatically change it, but it will allow it to, once it gets dark enough, to change over to night vision. Here we have a warning siren. So we can actually set that up and you can hear that's going off outside right now. I can select stop and I'll take a minute, but there we go. It has stopped the alarm outside. And then we have our settings, which brings us to our settings, which we went over before. And really that's everything that you can do for Smart Drop from the Smart App. I did mention down here, there is the events area. So tapping on this, you will see that there is a human detected and that I set the alarm off. If we wanted to, we can change the day and you can see all the recordings that I was doing before. Here we go. This is testing in the middle of a snow squall. And here we have download, share, donate, and delete this clip. And that's all from our events area. But that has been the Eufy app for the Eufy Smart Drop smart delivery box. What you saw and may have heard during the app is that you do have two-way audio with this. And I will admit the audio that you get from both this and on the receiving end in the app are remarkably better than some of some doorbells that I've actually tested. Here's an example of the audio that you can expect to get through the Eufy Smart Drop here. Test one, test two, test three. Sally sells seashells by the seashore. But knowing the audio quality that you get with something like this is not, is not the only thing that you're wondering about. You also wonder how good is this camera? As you know, I said, it does ice over, it does collect snow, but if you have optimal conditions, well, how does it look? And well, how does the audio through the app sound? Let's take a look at that now. Test sound, one, two, test, test, one, two.
human has been spotted. Let's see how this does with the wind. Test one, test two, test three. One, two, test, test. Test one, test two, test three. The last thing to consider when you're getting a smart security box like this is how will your actual mail carriers handle utilizing something like this? And well, for me, I had a 50% effectiveness rating. I'm the only one in my area that I've seen with something like this, so I don't know if it's just mail carriers have never experienced something like this before, or if they just don't care. Or, in one of my cases, the exterior of the packaging did not have my instructions or even my address. It was just a barcode that they scanned, and then I guess the app told them information, but I did put the code in my address instead of in special instructions because sticking on the address means you have a better chance of this actually working. So let me show you some of the examples that I got while I was testing the smart drop here to show you what you could encounter with your mail delivery. Also important to note is the operating temperature of something like this. You are looking at between negative four degrees and up to 140 degrees. I cannot test it in 140 degrees, but I can say that I have had it down to about 19 degrees and it has worked perfectly fine. Again, it's important to keep in mind with anything that is going to be outside, that it is well protected and can stand up to the elements, which the smart drop here has done very well. Last thing to consider is pricing for something like this, and I will admit, if you see the pricing, you might get a little bit of sticker shock. Keep in mind, not only are you getting a secure lockbox, you are also getting a monitoring system here with the camera. So if you think of it as a way to securely keep your packages safe from porch pirates and the weather, as well as a home monitoring system, then that price makes sense. I will admit, even after testing, I am going to keep the smart box out for package delivery just to keep people from messing with my deliveries. So if you would like to keep your packages safe from the weather, porch pirates, and well-meaning neighbors, I recommend checking out the Eufy Smart Drop Smart Delivery Box. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.